And finally, let's talk about cap and trade. Let's say, you know, there's a negative externality for pollution in some market, and let's say, you know, you did the math and you figured out that 40 is the optimal quantity, the socially optimal quantity is 40. Now, if there's only one business doing that pollution, you could even just, you know, tell them, hey, only pollute 40 units, and they're like, okay, fine. So that's one way to do it. But what if there's actually two companies? What if there's two different companies and you just want that they add up to polluting exactly 40 units? Well, do you just, you know, split them equally? Do you just say, hey, I, you both have to pollute 20 units each? Or do you uh, give, let the bigger company maybe pollute more? Well, how much more, you know? So the best thing to actually do is to let them figure it out on their own. So rather than assigning quantities, like fixed quantities, what you should do is give them what's called permits. So one permit lets you pollute one ton or something like that. And if you only make 40 permits, period, and assuming that they follow the law, well then, you're kind of guaranteeing that only 40 tons of pollution will happen. So that's what cap and trade is. Cap, the cap part of it is you saying, hey, only 40 units of pollution need to happen to have no dead weight loss. So how do I do that? Make 40 permits. That's You're capping it at 40 permits. But then... You could split them however you want. Let's say you just gave them both 20 permits each. And, you know, but then rather, rather than just forcing them to do that, you could say, hey, you know what? You guys can trade permits with each other if you want at whatever price you want. So that's where the trade part comes in. So that's what cap and trade is. It's when the government, when there's more than one entity that's doing the pollution and you want the total to add up to a certain number, you cap it at that, give them tradable permits, and let them figure it out. So... Let's say you have these graphs where these are the abatement costs. Abatement just means reduction, so it's their cost of reducing pollution. Let's say there's these two companies that are polluting, Apple and Toshiba, and you want, let's say, the quantity, the total quantity to be 40. And let's say you decided to give 20 permits to each. 20 permits to each firm. The question might be, what's the equilibrium price of a permit? And how, who will buy how many permits from whom? Well, the way to solve a problem like that is this. You really just have to guess and check for the price. Usually there won't be a lot of options, so it's actually not that bad to do. So let's say we're wondering, what if the price of a permit was four? What if, you know, they both got 20 permits each, Toshiba and Apple and others saying, hey, okay, you know what? What if uh, I could buy or sell permits for $4 each? Well, let's just look at Toshiba. Toshiba at $4, they'll want to pollute five units. So if they're given 20 permits, they're willing to sell 15 of them because they only really need to pollute five. And at that price of four, Apple wants to pollute 20 units. So they're actually, they're, they don't want to trade with anyone because they're like, we want to pollute 20 and we'll, we'll, we were given 20 permits, so we'll just pollute 20. So that's not really an equilibrium because then 25 units will uh, be polluted. But really, we have there's 40 permits in circulation, so that would that's almost like too high a, of a price for polluting. So let's just guess and check another value. So let's try three dollars. At three dollars, Apple wants to pollute 10 units. So out of the 20 permits that they're given, they're willing to sell 10. And at three dollars, again, to really, you're seeing Apple will want to pollute 30 units. They're only given 20 permits, though, so they're going to want to buy 10. Ah, so really all you're doing is you're checking for this. At what price do the two quantities add up to 40, the total number of permits in circulation? And so at 3, for example, we saw the 10 and 30 added up to 40, which means no matter what the initial split was, if it was 20 and 20 for each, Whoever wants to buy will, uh, will be able to buy exactly the number from the guy who wants to sell because they're going to add up to 40 anyways. So that's why here for this problem we could say that, all right, in this graph, the equilibrium price of a permit will be $3 and Toshiba will sell 10 of their permits to Apple.